I heard uh, um, Eric Stanley being part of a, a World Cup winning squad in, in India. What is the message to a British team competing in a World Cup in India? What, what's the message? How, how do you handle India itself? Um, hi, so yeah. First of all, first of all, I'm, I believe we're a bit late than we should have been. So I apologise for my role in that being a bit late. Um, obviously, when I was with in the previous World Cup, I was with India, and that's a very different animal to being in India, <laughs> part of the South African side. I don't know if you, you know, obviously, the crowds that are going to be at the Indian matches and the and the interest around that team movement around the country is going to be incredible. We, we have a tremendous experience now within the squad of India, you know, what it's like to be here, not just the conditions, but the hotels, the travel, what's involved with that. So a lot of, it's, a lot of it is are things guys know and understand. I think it's both just really, really then about actually being involved in the World Cup and, and how one stays calm in the moment and focuses on the, on the things that you guys probably hate so much as saying is the process. But... Um, one of, one of my key mantras as a coach is that if we've got a clear plan, um, then all you have to worry about is execution. If, you, if your plan's not clear, you have stress about, about what to do plus the execution. So the better prepared we are, the better we are. And that's really been part of what I've, I've sort of brought, brought across. Um, we had Mike Horn with the Indian team and he's a, you probably know him, he, he's a South African explorer and he's, his message to the Indian team at the time was, if I don't prepare, I die. So what's, what stress are you guys talking about? Preparation is crucially important. It takes away some of the stress. Thanks, Thank Lucia. You. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go to Nathan in your heart. Nathan? Uh, we're struggling to hear Nathan, so we'll just um, jump on to Johan next and then we'll come back to Nathan. Hi Eric, um, have you been to the pitch and are they using the black uh, turf this time or it's, was it similar as the last match South Africa played last year? I know there's a difference between the, the CP turf, the black turf and the, the, the kind of rainy swamp. It's black turf, it's got quite a lot of grass and I saw it yesterday but we were still two days out. Um, I, the, the curator told me that it would be grass but it would be brown so there's still a lot of heat and a lot of rolling to be done. It looks like it's going to be um, a, good, a good wicket. That's what I'm expecting throughout this World Cup. The, the, the red soil, which is you'll see, we'll find in Mumbai, that probably bounced a bit more, um, but also maybe a bit slower, whereas the, the black soil tends to skid on. This is a new square in Delhi. It's probably about four years old, but it's definitely the black soil and a decent covering of grass. Thanks, Johan. Uh, we'll try Nathan again, and failing that, we'll move on to Fadot. Uh, can you hear me now, Lucy? Uh, yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Uh, thank you very much. Apologies if I was back uh, earlier. Um, Lucy, just if I may, can I ask you a question or keep it to one? Uh, sure, go ahead. Thank you very much, Lucy. Um, good day, uh, Eric. We just want to see uh, what pictures the uh, rent out does this get discussed in coaches or team meetings on how you guys want to approach the tournament? How the rain affects the preparation, the the rain out the rain out um, matches. How it affects the preparation. Correct. It was disappointing for us. We we actually took a lot of, out of the bowling in against New Zealand, uh, in, very much around what we wanted to do, the plans and the execution of the plan. So um, we didn't get caught up too much in the actual result. There were some some good things, some stuff we had to work on. And to me, certainly from my discipline, it would be nice to have had two games, to have had the game against Afghanistan, to have done the things we did, and then take into a more match-ready situation with, with New Zealand. But it's one of those things. All the teams seem to have, have, have faced it. It would have been nice to have the two games. We didn't have it. We just have to move on. So it just means your practices have a different um, focus just in what you can do and what you can't do. So it's a little bit more match-specific preparation. Look, I think all the teams are, are in situations where you want to constantly be improving and moving forward, and that's what that's what we're trying to do as well. But I think in a tournament like this, it's also important to have options. What do you do in a situation? What happens if somebody goes down with cramp? 
we, we just want to also understand what happens in, in a situation like that or if somebody gets injured, what are our, our options? The wickets present themselves very differently here. So yes, there was some good progress made in those in, in the matches against Australia. Um, but you know, again, we didn't want to get caught up in the outcome. I think we, we got wickets at, at times that maybe the execution wasn't what you wanted to do. So we'll keep focusing on that. So there was some improvement. Using the bowlers we did was more to do just to see what we have as resources, what else is available. They are, they are, we are going to face different conditions in India and certain players and certain bowlers that will be effective here might not have been effective in South Africa. So it's always good to understand that from not only a selection perspective, but also in an emergency perspective in the middle. Thanks, Nathan. Fadoj? Thanks, Lucy. How's it going? Hi, Fadoj. Uh, obviously, you've um, lost uh, Amrit and Sisanga for this tournament, and I imagine they would have had big roles to play with the ball. Just taking that in, in consideration, how important will Kapil Surabada be, especially given his previous World Cup records, which maybe have underwhelmed? Uh, you know, it's, every one of the guys is going to be important. When, when, I think we're going to see a high-scoring tournament. I think we're going to see good wickets, and I think you just need to have every cog in, in your machine working well when it comes to the bowling. On a day, he's going to maybe go for some runs. Somebody else is going to have to step in, and vice versa, and other days. But yes, you know, I, I was asked about... Um, Anrich quite a bit when, when we lost him and one of the things that he does bring is, is the intimidation factor. I, I, I've sat in, I don't even know how many bowlers meetings and uh, team meetings and batting meetings and the more the opposition talks about a certain batsman or a certain bowler, the more you're in their heads and the more that you're ahead, ahead of them in the game and certainly someone like Anrich would have been someone they would have spoken about. Like, likewise with um, Kajis Arabada. So I think, I think he is one of our, our, our key members I, I don't always understand, you know, people like to talk about the leader of an attack. I think he just, he, he just naturally is somebody with a lot of experience and somebody that our opposition respects. So getting him up to speed and getting bowling at his best is not just important for him, but for us as a unit. But ultimately... Sorry, sorry I, I just wanted to follow up on that in terms of like his, his actual record at the World Cup. You know, is it something that, that we've spoken about in terms of maybe wanting to step up as a leader and, and I suppose improve on those numbers? Not specifically the World Cup. He's, I mean, Kajisa is a guy that wants to just be the best he can possibly be. So it's, it's every game, it's every practice, every, every time we talk. We had, a con we had a long conversation, him and I, about tactics to be used in the death in, in India. So it's, it's, it's a constant movement and a constant learning process and, and every day being a little bit better than yesterday. So I think, you know, I think one of the things that I, you know, back to the first question, you know, ultimately this is a World Cup. But the more we focus on the fact that it's going to be a match tomorrow or Saturday and it's going to be 300 balls and you're going to bowl so many overs and, and break it down to this moment rather than what happened in the past and what might happen in the future, the best it is. And certainly that's what we will do. So it is about a constant improvement and it is like that for Kahiso. So I wouldn't say it's specifically around the World Cup, more just trying to be the best you possibly can be at any point in time. Thanks, Fidoj. We're going to take three last questions. Uh, we're going to go Morgan, Zakia, and then look to wrap with Neil. Thanks, Lucy. Hi, Eric. Hi. Gerald's a youngster that you've worked with in the past. You've got a bit of a history and massive opportunity for him here at the World Cup. And that impression of his could be quite something that could be valuable for you guys in the tournament. Again, somebody that can bowl constantly at you know, 140 plus is, is important in any, in any conditions. Um, he's going he's gonna to run into, someone's going to punch him in the nose at some point. <laughs> I've absolutely no doubt about it. That's what this game's about, and particularly in India. And how you deal with it in those moments is what's important. So I think there was a great learning experience for him against Australia to come up against a very, very aggressive batting lineup. But to see him come through it and to see him come away with ideas and plans, he's a very intelligent cricketer, even as a young guy. He, he understands his game and he contributes a lot also in batting, in bowling meetings about batsmen and opposition. So I, I do think it's going to be a steep learning curve for him, but he, he is somebody with the material and the, and the resources to, to, to handle it. So... Um, I think one of, the, one of the things that's going to be important in Indian conditions is going to be your, your pace off deliveries. And he's got a, a delivery that we saw against Australia, e even in South African conditions, that was quite effective. I think it was Ingles he bowled with an incredible uh, leg cutter, which is, you know, one, again, once you get opposition talking about it, you're winning, you're winning a bit of a battle. So exciting man because you've got the pace and then the pace off as well. And then the fact that he is growing as an intelligent bowler as well, which is important. Thanks, Morgan. Zakia? Eric, the, the last time Sri Lanka played an official ODI to the bowl up from 50, <laughs> um, is that something that's, uh, you know, that, that you just go on to 
field and, and the players on the opposition lines that you know that's that's where they act and, and condition in South Africa have have managed to to control their batting lineup. That's uh, something you can take confidently. Uh, you know, the fact they got bowled at 50, I mean, that is remarkable to be quite honest. It's, it's, you know, you always have a partnership somewhere and guys get to 110, 120 or something. So it, it, it happens, you know, again, we really have to focus on what we do, what, our, what we want to do it and how we want to do it. But the fact that a team does come in with that sort of um, performance, certainly not going to, you know, we're not going to, um, we're not going to be unhappy about because psychologically it's going to be tough for them. But Again, I think we, we do understand them. We understand that the way that they bat and, and how we bowl. And, and hopefully, um, our, uh, the way we bowl does not suit the way they bat. And uh, you know, hopefully, uh, if we stick to our plans and, and do them correctly and have cl the correct field placings, we can keep them under that pressure. But uh, yeah, I mean, for the way the game goes, 50 today doesn't mean the same thing tomorrow, unfortunately. Thanks, Vicky. And then we'll end off with Neil. Hello, Eric. Um, Hi, Neil. I just wondered whether, as someone who started off as a fast bowler and became a genuine all-rounder, uh, what, what you've been doing, if anything, to squeeze some runs out of 8, 9, 10, as <laughs> like Gerald and, and yeah. the other bowlers? Yeah, that's a good question, Neil. It's, it's, it's actually something that Rob's got a very specific focus on, um, and, and they've been allocated to somebody to look after, so that there's, there's conversations around them uh, in terms of what the role will be. Are they batting together? Are they batting with the top order batsman? What what will they do to make sure we can eke out as many as we can, not only for them, but as a partnership? You know, if they're batting with the top order batsman, if they're batting with a David Miller, their role's very different if it's, you know, Shamsi and, and, and KG or whatever, whoever it might be. So it, it has been a very strong part of our conversation around um, the preparation thinking, Neil. And they have, let's put it, in a way put it, been allocated to one of the coaches to look after and, and, and get preparation done both from a tactical and a, and a technical um, perspective.